Okay, now I'm ready. The Mordheim campaign system is probably the main reason why this game continues to foster communities all over the world. The amount of emergent storytelling that this game facilitates based off of its relatively simple system is kind of staggering. The mechanisms at play present so many interesting decision-making opportunities and unexpected twists that it becomes hard not to think about your warband long after the game has been packed away. Over the course of just a single campaign, you can easily find yourself sucked into a narrative that you didn't even know existed, and you'll probably start to care about your little warband of plastic and metal way more than you thought you would. So what is a campaign? A campaign is simply a series of games in which each player keeps track of their warband's progress from game to game. You play a game of Mordheim, you go through the warband management and upkeep, record your warband's progress on your roster, and continue on to the next game of Mordheim. You can do this for as many or as few games as you want, depending on the sort of campaign you are running. This is the ideal way to play Mordheim, as the system for fighting one-off battles does not showcase what is best about the game, which is warband progression. But how do you actually run a campaign? How many players do you need? What if I have an odd number of players? What if your players have varying schedules? What if players quit and new players join? No need to worry, it's actually super simple, and there are several ways of handling a campaign based on what suits your group best. Luckily, a Mordheim campaign is very different from a role-playing game campaign, in that you don't need a game master to plan out the story or serve as the referee, although it can share similar properties if you want it to, but more on that later. Let's just start off simply. I have semi-arbitrarily decided that there are three types of campaigns. Open, Limited, and Narrative. These categories don't exist in the book, but they're helpful for me when thinking about how I want to run a Mordheim campaign. Let's start with the Open campaign. The Open campaign is basically the campaign style as described in the rulebook. You have however many players you want, all play Mordheim in a single campaign that stretches on for eternity or until you all get bored, or die, or something. This is the simplest way to play a campaign, and it is the most free-flowing and schedule-friendly way. New players can join the campaign at any time, and players can even have more than one warband involved in the campaign. There are no limits as to who can fight who, and there are no limits to the amount of games a warband can have under its belt. This is a great system if you have a large group of players who are all on different schedules and if you don't have a dedicated time and place for more time. It's also great because if you have more than one warband, you can pick which one to play based on your available opponents. For example, if I have a Witch Hunter warband with 5 or 6 games under its belt, but I also have a Skaven warband with only 2 games, and if a new player joins with a brand new warband, then I can have them face my Skaven so there's a bit more balance. However, there are rules that reward players of lower warband ratings for facing tougher opponents. This is called the underdog bonus, and it can actually accelerate a new warband's growth, if the weaker warband is smart enough to avoid being completely wiped out. Plus, this is Mordheim, and this is a d6. You're as likely to roll a 1 as you are a 6. I've seen incredibly powerful warbands get absolutely shredded by the new kids on the block, which is always equal parts hilarious and kind of sad. Another good thing with this system is that you can scrap a warband and start a new one pretty much at any time. So if you get bored of your mercenaries, you can scrap them and maybe start up a Sister of Sigmar warband. So in the end, everything kind of tends to even out, and the open campaign system is actually the main way in which my group plays Mordheim, because we have all kinds of players who have different schedules and come from all over the county. So this example here kind of brings up another good question. What if you have an odd number of players on game day? The scenarios in the rulebook are really only geared towards one-on-one -on -one games. Well, the solution to this problem was provided in issue number 5 of The Town Crier, which is a publication that was dedicated strictly to Mordheim. Issue number 5, entitled Chaos in the Streets, has rules and scenarios for fighting battles with more than two players, which they call multiplayer battles. I mean, technically two player is also multiplayer, never mind, it works. The rules mention setting up and playing on a six foot by four foot table, but my group has found that a standard four by four setup still works pretty perfectly with up to four players. 
Either deploy your forces on the corners, or work out some way to keep distance between warbands deployed on table edges. You can find Town Crier number 5, as well as pretty much all other things Mordheim related, on broheim.net. So that's it for the open campaign. Let's move on to what I call a limited campaign. You can call it limited, structured, closed, or whatever you want. I like the word limited because, well, it's kind of what it is. It's a Mordheim campaign with certain limitations in place to keep all the warbands progressing at the same pace. Usually a limited campaign is a set number of games and players are limited to a single warband. Furthermore, there could be some sort of win condition set for the end of the campaign, be it greatest number of victories, most weird stone collected, highest warband rating, or whatever you want. You can also choose to run these campaigns round robin style meaning each player must face each other once before any matchups are repeated. So in this example, if I have four warbands here, I could have my Witch Hunters face the Sisters of Sigmar, and the Mercenaries face the Skaven in round one. But next round, we'll put the Witch Hunters against the Mercenaries, and the Skaven against the Sisters. And then for our final round, we'll have our Sisters versus our Mercenaries, and our Skaven versus our Witch Hunters. Any subsequent rounds will require repeating matchups. And then maybe at the end of your campaign, you could have a final round that includes all four players duking it out in a giant battle royale. This can also be a good way to determine the number of games you want your campaign to be. For example, if we have four players, we can either do a short three game round robin campaign with an optional fourth multiplayer game, or you can do a six game campaign where each of the matchups are held twice. If you have an odd number of players, you can either work in a multiplayer battle each round, host the whole campaign as a series of multiplayer battles, or have a player sit out each round and give them some kind of compensation. Just do your best to try and keep it even, whatever you do. Multiplayer battles can tend to take a little longer, so it can be off-putting to be the one player who's always finding themselves in a multiplayer battle each round. On the topic of compensation for sitting out one round, that's something I should talk about. What happens if a player misses a game in a limited campaign? Because all warbands are progressing in parallel, an absent player will be left behind. We try to work it in compensation for a player that misses a game. Usually they earn something like a D3 plus 1 extra weird stone shards each time they miss a game, and then they can go on to the trading step. This keeps their income steady while not offering them any greater reward than those who actually participated. Obviously, limited campaigns work best when every player can commit to playing each game of the campaign. One popular variant of the Mordheim campaign is the Mordheim map campaign. This involves players picking districts to fight over on a map of the city. Each territory confers a specific benefit to the warband that controls it, meaning that as territories are scooped up, warbands will get stronger and stronger. This campaign really adds a lot of interesting context to the battles you're fighting, and it can be fun to carve out your own slice of the City of the Dam. The map campaign can also be found on broheim.net. The rules for the campaign are printed on the map itself, but even after reading them, my group and I still had a lot of unanswered questions. Maybe I'll get around to describing how a map campaign works sometime, but until then, use your best judgment and you'll be just fine. You'll have a ton of fun running a map campaign with your group. The final campaign type is the narrative campaign. A narrative campaign is a type of limited campaign where the focus is on immersion and storytelling. You still play more time and manage your warband normally, but there's an overarching story being told from game to game, and the scenarios will usually be based on what the narrative is centered around at any given time. These campaigns usually take the most planning of any campaign type, and they're sometimes run by a game master who can serve as the referee or run special events or characters that appear during the games. A narrative campaign usually has some sort of story hook that explains why all the warbands are involved, and there can be a lot of interesting ways of interacting with the story or the individual scenarios that are not dictated by the rules in the Mordheim rulebook. This is why a game master can sometimes be required for a narrative campaign. While narrative campaigns can be fun, they probably take the most time and investment from the players to run successfully, as they can be pretty dependent on player attendance and enthusiasm. Games in a narrative campaign can also deviate greatly from the normal rules, introducing strange new mechanics or systems to help serve the narrative. 
Because of this, narrative campaigns are usually best played by people who are already pretty seasoned Mordheim players, who are looking for a new and interesting way to connect with the game. I myself have written my own narrative campaign setting, called the Procession of Moor. It involves the warbands escorting priests of Moor through Mordheim, shepherding lost souls to the realm of the dead, all while uncovering a mysterious plot. It's a six-game campaign that has several new scenarios that differ widely from those found in the rulebook doesn't require a game master to run, and it introduces a fun weirdstone bidding mechanic to the post game. If you're a seasoned Mordheim player looking to try something different, you could give my campaign a try. I'll try to put a link in the description of this video. So to quickly recap, open campaigns are the most flexible, letting anyone play against anyone, anywhere, and as often as they like. Limited campaigns are more structured and are intended to create a concise, focused experience where Success is determined by whatever parameters that the players see fit. And finally, narrative campaigns are story-focused experiences that require a good deal of prep, sometimes a game master, and more commitment from everyone involved. I hope this gives you some insight on what sort of campaign style works for you. Don't worry too much about trying to shoehorn some epic story or wild victory conditions into your first campaign. The game naturally has enough twists and turns that just playing a single warband will give you some sort of story arc. And remember that, no matter what sort of campaign you're running, the goal is always to have fun. If everyone has fun together, then your campaign was a success. So thanks for watching, and have fun!